Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create an interactive module using just PowerPoint. Um, you don't need any fancy software, you don't need a PowerPoint to flash converter. You'll be able to save this whole presentation or this whole e-learning module as a PPS file and you can actually post this on a website and have it as a web-based e-learning module. So I'm going to show you what the e-module uh, looks, looks like because I actually created this for a records management department. As you can see there's an uh, animation and then it transitions to another slide and there are no clicking areas to advance here so it will advance automatically until it reaches a menu slide which is right here. At this point in the game um, this turns into e-learning and uh, you see we have the little guy here that says okay click on a column to learn about each section. So the user now can click on one of the columns to go to one of the uh, training areas. So if I click on knowing your records it's going to take me to that slide. At this point the learner will be in control. They can decide which slides they want to view first, which topics they want to view first. Um, they decide on the order, which makes this nonlinear. And the controlling factor here is actually the menu that's at the bottom of each of the uh, slide sections. So if I click on record policy, you notice that the menu is still there at the bottom. The content itself can be changed. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, the big player here again is the menu and I also added at the bottom of the slides at the end of each topic um, a little prompt here that says choose another topic or click here to end. If they click here to end it'll bring them to the final slide that tells them look you've chosen to end the training you may uh, return at a later date and review the sections and then a quirky little um, ending there. So I'm gonna dissect these slides and show you how I did this. I'm going to go to the first slide, and the first uh, two slides have a transition to them. Um, the first slide has no actual um, transition, it's no transition, but it does advance automatically after four seconds. And you notice here I have um, to advance after four seconds. So, what this means is that even if the user clicks on the slide, it won't advance when they click on it, it'll wait the four seconds before it advances. And then on the instruction, uh, page here I have a fade transition and it advances after seven seconds. This gives the user enough time to read the instructions here and have the animations come up. There are animations on this slide as you saw. Um, the instructions come up first, um, this choose another topic comes up, then the arrow along with the verbiage here. This menu at the bottom is not active, it's just a graphic and it um, basically is a uh, couple of rectangles and wording and some color. The action begins here on slide three. So this is my first active menu. Let me move back up here again. My first active menu. So each column has a hyperlink attached to it and there is a transition or an animation to them. So the animation on each of these, if we click on it, you notice uh, this is just gonna wipe in and the same here and you're not seeing the actual animation because each of these have a blank um, uh, rectangle over them for the hyperlink so if I click on this here you notice it's wipe so let's just drag this back over because I do like to use uh, transparent rectangles for my hyperlinking um, the B here he does not have a hyperlink um, there is just a motion path I used and I did a a freehand motion path to have him fly in and make it look a little natural when he flies in. Now the slides, um, at the bottom here, this menu bar, what I did is I did not apply it to a master because on each slide the current slides um, button does not have a hyperlink on it. Only the other buttons will have a hyperlink to it. Um, so what you can do is you can create this and then you can uh, copy and paste it to your other slides. Um, and I just, what I did is I blank, uh, I added blank uh, squares to these and then I added the hyperlink to all the squares so you can just move your uh, hyperlink off of the current content area. And um, I do have here a slide that's hidden because at one point when I was planning I was trying to decide, you know, if I I wasn't going to use the menu bar at the bottom, I was just going to have at the end of the slide, I was going to have it come back here, so I wanted the B to be static, I didn't want the animation to occur again. But then I thought, you know, it'd be simpler if the um, menu bar was just at the bottom. 